and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at noon. Thank you very much for joining us on this Wednesday afternoon. I'm Kyle Bosch. Well, it's certainly been a very beautiful fall weather-wise, but we all knew it was only a matter of time, and that time has come. The first snowfall of the season hit many parts of the valley today. This was the scene in the Bemidji, Minnesota area this morning. Had some flakes flying in Fargo and many other parts, even some spots picking up a little accumulation. With more on the snowy forecast and the snow we saw today, let's check in right away with meteorologist Robert Hahn. Hi, Robert. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, we've got the, some snow falling over parts of the area. We've seen some intermittent snow even here in the uh, Fargo-Moorhead area. Off towards the east, some steadier snow, but lighter snow off towards the west and southwest, where you see those brighter blues and even the whites embedded there. Some bursts of heavier snow that continue to slide off toward the southeast. Some snow squalls making their way through far southeastern portions of North Dakota. We will continue to see some rounds of snow as we head through the rest of the day and even into tonight. And this is, I wanted to show you Frank. This is Frank. He's got a face that pretty much everybody is sharing today that doesn't like the snow. I do, however, like the snow. So Frank is sharing that face that uh, a lot of folks are seeing. Here is some of that uh, accumulation that Kyle had mentioned in the Clearbrook, Minnesota area. And uh, sharing a sentiment there, depressing. For some folks, it is depressing. For other folks, again, such as myself, this is rather exciting, that first snow. Authorities across the area, and as we take a look at the... Uh, Winter Weather Awareness Week very quickly. Winter Survival Kit, First Aid Kit, Blankets and such. We've got this on our Valley News Live website. You can go to valleynewslive.com, click on weather, and check on that. It is Valley News Live, or it is Winter Weather Awareness Week all week. More on the snow, but also improving weather coming up in just a few minutes. Very aptly timed oh, with absolutely. that Winter yeah. Weather Awareness Week. Yeah. All right, Robert, thank mm -hmm. you very much. The sheriff's deputy seen in a video violently removing a student from her desk in South Carolina has been fired. The sheriff there said that Deputy Ben Fields violated police regulations when he threw the girl. Now, the decision comes even after another video shows the student hitting the officer before he put his hands on her. Omar Villafranca has the latest. This is the video Sheriff Lott is referring to. You can see the student strike the officer at least once after Deputy Fields puts her into a headlock and grabs her leg. Even though she refused to abide uh, by the directions of the teacher, the school administrator, and then also the verbal commands of our deputy. I'm looking at what our deputy did. Fields' actions have outraged many in the community, including parents, about a dozen whom voiced their opinions at a Tuesday night school district board meeting. You guys, you are responsible for these people. Classmates of the students say the confrontation began when a teacher and school administrator repeatedly asked her to put away her cell phone during class. One student, who asked that his face and voice be concealed, says other kids in the class tried to defuse the situation. She was even told by the students to just get up and leave when the administrator came in. My first thought was, oh my God, that's the same guy. Wendy Johnson says her autistic son was in a physical struggle with Deputy Fields when he was a freshman. She took these photos of her son after the altercation, his shirt torn and marks on his arms and shoulder. The people that are supposed to be protecting my children, I've got to worry if they're being hurt by those people. Now, Johnson's son was expelled after that incident. Officials say the federal investigation into Field's actions, which was started by the Justice Department yesterday, could take several weeks. University of Minnesota head football coach Jerry Kill announced this morning he is retiring from football effective immediately, citing his continued battle with epileptic seizures. While not speaking in detail, Kill confirmed in a news conference that he suffered a number of recent seizures, including two just before a practice this week as the Gophers get ready for their big matchup against Michigan. Breaking down several times this morning, Kill said that this is the toughest decision he's ever made, but that he knows his wife and children will need him in the future more than football does now. My wife was two nights ago up with me all night, and I slept one hour and come to work. I probably most sleep I've gotten over the last three weeks is probably three hours or less. And she stays there and sits in a chair and, and watches me. That's what she did last night. Hell, that ain't no way to live. 
Now, the interim head coaching role moves to Tracy Clays. He's worked with Kill for 21 years. Clays was previously the associate head coach and defensive coordinator for the team. New for you at noon, the Prairie Roots Food Co-op has announced plans to open a grocery store in downtown Fargo. The store will feature natural, organic, and local food. Prairie Roots and Kilbourne Group reached a property agreement late Friday afternoon. The co-op plans to open the grocery store at 1213 NP Avenue on the corner of University Drive. The store will have groceries, household items, a deli and cafe seating area. Right now, Prairie Roots has more than 800 members, but they're hoping to reach 1,500 by the time the store opens in late 2016. XL Energy made some history this morning showing off new drone technology that it says will be used to protect and improve energy reliability. During the event, technicians inspected a seven-mile stretch of transmission line near the Canadian border. It was the first FAA-sanctioned drone flight in the state of North Dakota. XL says that using drones will allow safer, lower-cost line inspections. Job seekers have a chance to get in on a free career fair today. It's going on at Rasmussen College in Moorhead until 5 tonight. You can have your resume reviewed and even participate in mock interviews. The job fair is open to students, graduates, or anyone else in the community. We do have, have a heads up for drivers in Fargo. 7th Avenue North between University Drive and 12th Street is closed now for a repair for a broken, broken water main. Traffic is going to be detoured onto 8th Avenue North. Crews expect that the work should be done by the end of the day. Well, some scary moments for passengers and crew aboard an American Airlines flight last night. The airline says that the plane was flying from Phoenix to San Diego when it was hit by a green laser. The plane was able to land safely in San, San Diego without any further incidents. American says that the plane's pilot and co-pilot declined medical treatment and were not hospitalized. Authorities are still investigating that incident. Coming up on your news at noon, we'll take you to a unique fashion show where the clothes are made out of a delectable treat. But next, meteorologist Robert Hahn will be back in with weather to plan your Wednesday.